Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my new video where if you give me around 10 minutes of your time, I am going to make you a better laner. Now, I'm going to go over five different ways you can look to improve your current laning. If any of you guys have your own tips um, that would help others in laning, I would love to hear your comments uh, down below. If you're new to the channel, my name is Lofit. I do educational content. I do tip videos, do guide videos, and uh, just kind of all over the place. I also stream quite a bit. I uh, stream at uh, about 10 uh, PST to 12, and then I do another stream at 6.30 to about 11. So if you want to check those out, maybe ask me a live question. I can help you out with uh, anything you need. Uh, there's going to be a Discord link in the description as well. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, I try to be as interactive as possible uh, with my subscribers and followers and try and get them out of uh, low elo. Now, as you can see, I am a... Uh, low diamond player so i'm not the best uh micro player but i am a huge specialist in helping people getting out of low elo since i've started this channel i'd say i've probably helped around 100 people get out of just whatever they were stuck in in bronze or silver or iron so um, with that lengthy intro out of the way uh let's jump right into the five tips all right and for the first tip that i'm going to go over it is ability usage so it's really important in any lane um it doesn't have to just be in the top lane with something like renekton here but it can be very prevalent in ability based matchups so say you have a enemy if you're this target dummy right here just kind of picture yourself if you see the renekton use his all in if he uses his e maybe to clear some waves maybe his q this is when you should be focused and looking to fight him because he is going to be rather weak when these cooldowns are up um here let's just teleport to a new wave i, I think i bought too much ad i just clear the waves instantly so whenever these abilities are down you want to look to take advantage of those windows in those windows you are more powerful um, than your enemy in most of the time it's going to be a little bit different for auto based uh, champions so um, if you look for those windows i want you to keep in your mind that's a plus one and we're going to kind of run this theme throughout the series and we're going to get um, through other tips um, and other lane situations it's going to be a plus two or maybe a plus three or plus four and then um Say after you use your abilities on minions, you want to think of your lane trading potential as a minus one. So you want to take trades at your highest number, and uh, the lower your number is, um, the, the riskier uh, your trades are going to be. So that's going to wrap up tip number one. All right, and let's jump into tip number two. Now, I want to talk about a very common lane state. Say you're losing the lane and you have a big lane of minions getting pushed into you. This is the absolute last last time you want to the last point in the lane where you want to trade into a bunch of these minions i am level 18 and i am taking a decent amount of damage from these casters as you can see this is 24 attack damage being done for to you per auto and these minions attack pretty quickly so whenever you are looking to trade particularly in low elo i see this all the time people are trading into massive minion waves or maybe a jungler is coming to gank you when you have a huge minion wave which is my literal the my biggest pet peeve in the world and when i'm solo laning i have a huge wave like that stacking up before me and they are coming to gank me and putting me in a very poor position so um if you have a big minion wave give yourself a plus one in the trading pattern if you have if your enemy has a huge minion wave give yourself a minus one in the pattern so um, again, it is uh, ability usage right now, and we also have um, the minion waves. They do a surprising amount of damage, particularly cannons in the early game really do a crap ton of damage. Um, just think of a couple times where, uh, say you were in a lane and you get a really good all-in, but they get away with that 6 HP that is so, so freaking annoying. But if you had a bigger minion wave... Maybe if you were fighting in a big minion wave, maybe you would have gotten the kill with that extra bit of uh, minion wave damage. So you want to keep that in mind when you are looking to trade. All right, and let's get into tip number three. Now, this one's a little bit more, uh, a little bit simpler <clears throat> than the previous tips, but I wanted to talk about it because it's extremely important. And a lot of people don't understand this before looking in. Uh, to go for these all ins. Now, this is going to be extremely important. Okay, 
It is item spikes. This is a pretty common item spike for uh, Renekton. A little bit less common with the, with the nerfs coming into how expensive Tiamat is. But you always want to be seeing what the enemy laner just bought and what kind of power they have right now. If you're able to say you're not running Ignite and you're running Teleport and you're able to get a good item back and the enemy doesn't have Teleport and you just have a huge item advantage, you want to look for an always. So this would be a plus one in your advantage. Um, also, just kind of, I, I know this is pretty self-explanatory, but just keep in mind summoners. I, I, I I've kind of feel like I shouldn't need to say this, but you never know with people that might be stuck in a little bit of lower elo is just assign summoners and power spikes. Say you have the better power spike, you want to give that enemy a plus one. And if uh, um, you have the bigger power spike, you want to give yourself a plus one. So just keep this in mind when you're trading because obviously it's going to give you more um, trading potential when you have a big power spike like something like Tiamat or something like Sheen that are really strong uh, after your first back but I wouldn't generally assign that to something like maybe a tier of the goddess except on rise isn't really too much of a power spike so I wouldn't assign any number to that so always just do a quick press tab really quickly right before you take your trades and make sure he doesn't have any item that is kind of sneaky and you, you weren't looking at it maybe it's a bramble vest or in executioners and you thought you were going to be able to heal more so always always check out um, what items are being held by the enemy all right let's jump into tip number four now this one's a little bit isn't going to be too much about micro and more about your game knowledge now um, I, what I want you guys to really understand and what I really want you to look up is if you do not know too much about a champion and where they are strong, I want you to look it up before you play them in a game against something like Renekton. A lot of the times it's not even worth trading due to an insane amount of sustain. A lot of them run um, maybe Taste of Blood, maybe Ravenous Hunter. They get a lot of healing from their Q. They might be going Doran's Blade. So what Renekton is able to do is take very poor trades but is able to sustain up and any sort of trade he gets on you is going to be a net positive. So um, ask yourself, is it even worth trading? I am I an insanely strong scaling champion? Am I a Vladimir in the top lane? Do I even want to ta risk taking trades against Renekton in the first place? I know this might seem a little bit odd for a, a, a tip video on trading, but sometimes the best trade you can take is to just not trade at all. Just be like, F fuck it, I'm going to scale. Uh, my team's doing well. All I have to do here is not feed. Now, uh, there might be a weird situation where uh, you're, all your team is feeding and you might have have to force something in the early and mid game and just kind of good luck to you on that if um, you're playing against a Renekton or if you're playing against a very strong early game bully and you're kind of a late game scaler it might be a bit of a struggle but you can look for an outplay but always keep in mind that if your team is doing well you're playing a scaling champion they're playing an early game champion do not take any unnecessary risks uh, with your uh, lane trading if you have any questions about just kind of champions and their certain spikes uh, maybe you're like, oh, when is Darius extremely strong? Or when is um, Zoe really strong? I can help you out in the comments down below. Please let me know. And I will just kind of give you some general advice. Um, but first and foremost, with, with this uh, kind of knowledge, it, it all comes down to game experience. Just play as many games as you can in ranks because that's going to give you the best idea of the metagame and people are going to be trying hardest there in compared uh, to normals. Uh, now that's going to wrap up this tip. Oh, right, let's get into the final tip for trading in lane. So let me clean up these really quick. Okay, so um, really undervalued, especially in the early game, particularly in low elo again. What I see a lot is people are not weaving in their auto attacks in between their abilities. So whenever you look to go for a trade, always start it off with an auto and then to into a queue and then maybe into another auto and just always make sure to weave in your auto attacks and you can use a tiamat to cancel if you want but just always look to reset your autos with your abilities this is going to provide you with a little bit more damage and again a previous scenario um to that uh 
um, previous tip where I gave about uh, minion damage, maybe giving you that little bit more, those auto attacks might be that little bit more damage that is required when you are looking to do a trade where you are going uh, all in and maybe they get away with uh, 10 or 20 health. That might have just been you weaving in your auto attacks and um, just you really want to keep uh, this in mind when you're looking for trades because everyone else is around you is probably working on it the same. I know this is a pretty obvious tip, but I, I see this so much when I just kind of flex with my viewers on my streams is they are not weaving in their auto attacks when I'm playing against the enemy. So really uh, keep this in mind if you have any questions about this. Um, yes, you should be doing this on mages as well, particularly in the early game where you don't really have to overextend much. Um, all right, that'll wrap it up. Those are the top five tips. We, uh, it, if you have any questions for me, guys, as always, I, I, I'm really just trying to build up uh, my community and just doing a bunch of videos and streams where we're going to just get a bunch of people together on the Discord that are just looking to help each other out, get better in league, and kind of have fun, play together. I'm also doing a tournament on Friday with a bunch of uh, people from the Discord and a bunch of moderators are putting together some teams. I'm going to be on one of the teams and it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure to check that out on Friday at 6.30 uh, PST. As always, guys, take it easy.